He was the Nationals diehard who handed out party stickers to friends at school. But those days are over. The National Party today is very different to the National Party that I grew up with. And the source of his discontent, this declaration from leader David Littleproud in November. We will not support the voice uh, to Parliament. I just don't know why that had to happen in the way that it did so quickly. I mean, the point of this is to work through it and it needs to be a national conversation. National MPs argue a referendum on The Voice will divide the country, but the issue has ended up isolating Andrew G within his own party. And I think there just comes a point where you can make too many compromises. I think what we can take from this um, isn't about forcing or coercing people to make particular decisions or, you know, shock or anything like that, um, but more so about really engaging with what the principle of The Voice is about, which is dialogue. The Nationals leader has described Andrew G's departure as unfortunate, but says the MP is free to make his own decision and vote accordingly, while affirming that the National Party remains united in its opposition to The Voice. The honourable thing to do is actually to stand down from Parliament, to actually stand down from Parliament, let the people of Calais decide whether they want him as an independent. I want to work with uh, all members of Parliament to promote The Voice. Uh, Andrew G has made a principled statement. That statement earning endorsement from an Indigenous leader in Mr G's electorate. I really feel that it has taken courage for Mr Andrew G to actually do that. Andrew G's defection is a reminder of the challenge facing the Nationals' coalition partner. The Liberals are yet to come to a position on The Voice, with Peter Dutton arguing he needs to see more detail. Ensuring cohesion won't be easy at a time when the party is being pulled in different directions following its election defeat. Jake Lapham, ABC News, Sydney.